In this video, I'm going to talk about the general solution to the Schrodinger equation. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. What I want to do in this video is build upon what we've been doing in the past few videos of this series. So we started off uh, solving the Schrodinger equation using the method of separation of variables. And that gave us solutions that were separable. So solutions that were of the form where you could split them up into a product of functions, where one function just depended on x and one function just depended on t. So we're going to use these separable solutions, and we're going to stitch them together to make a general solution. So let's go ahead and, and have a look at what these separable solutions look like. So these should be familiar uh, if you watched the previous videos. And make sure you watch the video about uh, separation of variables because that's the most important one. That's where we actually see how we can get these separable solutions. So first of all, I'm going to write capital Psi of x and t. So this is the separable solution. This is a wave function. It's a solution to the Schrodinger equation. It has two parts to it. It is the product of a lowercase psi of x, which just depends on x. There's no time dependence in this. And we can get these uh, by solving the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, uh, that's the one that this one satisfies, and this one satisfies the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And we also have to add on our little uh, exponential factor, which has a negative i in it. It's a complex exponential. And we have the energy. We also have time, and we're dividing this by h bar. And h bar is Planck's constant over 2 pi. It's the reduced version of Planck's constant. We've absorbed the 2 pi inside here. So this e is the energy. This e is Euler's number. So there are different e's. This is just the exponential function. So this guy is how the time dependence is incorporated into the solution. And this is how the position dependence is incorporated into the solution. When we solve, the time independent Schrodinger equation, we're not just going to get one solution. We're going to get an infinite set of solutions. And we can label each of these solutions with an index n. So n is going to be this little index that's going to label uh, which solution we're dealing with. And each solution is going to be associated with an allowed energy. And that energy, I'm also going to label with this index n. And I'll use this index over here. So now we have the nth solution, or the nth separable solution to the Schrodinger equation, is a product of the nth solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation and this exponential factor uh, that keeps uh, track of this energy. So this energy, the nth allowed energy, is associated with the nth solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So these guys are the separable solutions that I was talking about. So what is so special about these guys? In the previous video, we saw that they are stationary states. So if you prepare a system in one of these states, in one of these special separable solutions, the probability density doesn't depend on the time. So that means it's a stationary state. It's not going to change as uh, time goes on. So time evolution doesn't affect it. Once you start this, the system in that stationary state, it's just going to stay until it gets uh, interacted with by something from the outside until you make a measurement on that system. So let's go ahead and actually stitch these guys together and make a general solution to the Schrodinger equation. What we're going to do is we're going to take a, a linear combination of these guys. And what a linear combination is, is you take functions and you scale them by some constants, and then you add them. So you take the sum of scaled functions. And these uh, scalars that are out the front for these constants, they can actually be complex values. They don't just have to be real numbers. They can have imaginary components as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the general solution. So the general solution is going to look like this. So we're going to have x and t. These guys are what uh, the wave function depends on, depends on the position of the time. And this is equal to the sum. Right? So we're summing over the index n. Uh, we start at 1, and we go all the way up to infinity, because this is an infinite set of solutions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these guys, and we're going to sum over them. And we're going to need constants. And these constants I'm going to call Cn. So this is a constant associated with the nth one of these separable solutions. So here we have 
psi of x and t. But this is the nth version of that. So this guy we can then repackage into this form. We can rewrite the sum. Now the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cn little psi of n, and this depends on x, times, I'll move over to this side, times this exponential factor. And this exponential factor is going to have a minus i e n t over h bar. So you see how this is actually equivalent. This guy is just a repackaged version of all of this. Those are the separable solutions that we found. And these constants out the front, they can, have, they can actually have a real component and an imaginary component. So you can write cn as an plus i bn. Right? This uh, bn could be 0, or this an could be 0. Or, in fact, both of them could be 0, and this constant could be 0. In a lot of solutions that we encounter, uh, they might just be a finite number of separable solutions in the general solution. So you might start off uh, just having a linear combination of two separable solutions. And then as time progresses, uh, the system can evolve. So if you start off in one separable solution, you're going to stay in that state forever, because it's a stationary state. But that is not true if you have a combination, a linear combination of these separable states. Because when you take the probability uh, density function, you're going to end up squaring all of this. And when you take the square amplitude, there's going to be cross terms. And all the exponentials are not going to cancel out. They're actually going to mix together. And so you're going to have some kind of oscillatory behavior. So this is how the general solution gets constructed from these separable solutions. So the most important message of this video is that you can take the separable solutions that we found using the method of separation of variables, and you can take a linear combination of separable solutions, and that gives you the general solution. And so now all you have to do is find these constants. And that's easier said than done. There's actually quite a lot of uh, mathematical machinery that goes into finding these constants. Once you know the constants, and you know what these uh, little values are over here, and you know the allowed energy levels, you know everything about the time evolution. All you have to do uh, is keep track of when it, when it is happening and what the initial conditions were. So you need the initial conditions, and then you can map out the time evolution of this wave function until it gets interacted with by the outside world. The, the moment you make a measurement, uh, you've collapsed the wave function, and you've completely changed uh, the situation. But as long as this is not measured, as long as it's left to evolve by itself, this is how you can describe the time evolution of the wave function. And that's one of the really big important parts of quantum mechanics. So you can actually find, uh, we're going to keep talking about uh, these kind of situations in quantum mechanics in this playlist. And make sure you watch uh, all the videos in this playlist. You can find them if you click over here.